Black Power to the Beloved is the Sage of the Age. Back dropping more gems than pigeon shit. You know what I'm saying? We premiering from every hood to Hollywood, baby. Today we're going to be dealing with the incest and prostitution in the Bible. Yes, you did hear me right. We are touching on some very, very critical yet sensitive subjects. And damn it, if we want to do better as a people and get better mentally, spiritually, physically, then we got to look at our teachings and make sure that we understand where our fault and where our transgressions come in at. Because a lot of times it's coming straight from this Godhead that y'all claim is all omnipotent and everything like that. And a lot of these scriptures that I'm going to be dealing with today, a lot of people don't know about these. You know, Rev didn't tell you about these scriptures. They didn't tell you about Rahab or or or, or uh, Ur and the son of Judah, him out there fooling with them prostitutes, turning tricks. See, they never tell you about anything like that. They just give you the cheese on the trap, which lure you in. And by the time somebody like Osiris Child 360 come in and fuck up your paradigm and shake you smooth up out your ignorance, you into that cognitive dissonance and you don't want to understand because people don't only gave you the candy, the cotton candy and the rainbows of the goddamn story. Well, I'm here to give you the other aspect of the story so you can understand what's going on. I want to thank and uh, give a shout out to the ancestors for, for gracing me with this knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Put me in this divine state of mind so I can shed the light on my people. Hopefully, I'll take this in and shed it to somebody else who I might not be able to. You know what I'm saying? Thank you for the master teachers, the ones who I'm standing on their shoulders, giving me this divine wisdom so I can give it to my people. I'm talking about Dr. Ben, Dr. Clark, uh, uh, Ivan Van Sertima, Drusilla Dungeon Houston, Francis Chris Wilson, Sharshi McIntyre, George G.M. James, A.C. Hilliard. Uh, 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 Marcus Garvey, Malcolm X, the list goes on and on and on. You know what I'm saying? Pick you one, nigga, and each one teach one, like I always say. Thank you for the family, for your support. Thank you for holding the brother down. That puts me in a position where I can get out there and do my research, come back and give it to the family like I'm supposed to. You know what I'm saying? Keep supporting me. You see the rolling banner, the email, and the cash out. If there is a, a subject you want me to touch on lightly, you know what I'm saying, or pull up in your hood, you know what I'm saying, Millie Rock on your block, I can do that. Put your coins together, and I can put together that awesome lecture and do what I got to do, okay? See the cash out family, support me because I support you, you know what I'm saying? Later on down the road, we got the websites coming on with the tears on the Patreon. We got the merchandise coming up, family. You're not going to want to miss this. This shit is hot, God damn it. It's hot. Now, <clears throat> without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get in this thing, you know what I'm saying? So, like I said, we're dealing with the incest and prostitution in the Bible. And this God right here, this nigga, he hurt. He got his head down because Osiris Child 360 coming to break his goddamn back in. You know what I'm saying? No homo, though. Now, the first goddamn story we're going to get into is the ancestral story of Noah. Now, for people who don't understand, Noah came up out of Earl Child Deer. You understand what I'm saying? Which is over there in Mesopotamia. Then he meandered his way to uh, uh, Egypt. Then back, I think, into Canaan and all in them, all in the desert and all this and whatever. So, you know, he had a wife whose name was Sarah. You know what I'm saying? So what people don't understand and what they don't tell you in these churches that Sarah was Noah's sister. See what I mean? Now I'm going to go to the family tree so we can break that down. But Sarah was Noah's sister who he got there having relations with. Now, on top of that, Abraham... Prost, uh, prostituted Sarah out to the Pharaoh so he can get some nice things out of Egypt. Okay, because he came into Egypt with not a damn thing left with all kinds of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Because he out there pimping out his wife. And from that uh, 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 lineage of Noah, you see his old no good ass uh, descendants following suit. You know what I'm saying? So I had to break that down to you before we get into the story. Now, here's the story. Genesis 12, 11 through 20. It say, as he was about to enter Egypt, this is Abraham. He said to his wife, Sarah, I know what a beautiful woman you are. OK, when the Egyptians see you, they will say this is his wife. Then they will kill me, but will let you live. Say you are my sister so that I will be treated well for your sake and my life will be spared because of you. Now, what kind of coward will say some shit like, baby, we finna go into a new land. You know what I'm saying? And these niggas are some 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 gorillas. They hard body. I'm I'm a little cat out here. I'm a kitten. You know what I'm saying? So. Instead of saying you my wife, say you my sister. Now, the thing is, it really was his sister, okay? It was his sister. Now, say, when Abram came to Egypt, the Egyptians saw that Sarah was a, be a very beautiful woman. When Pharaoh's officials saw her, they praised her to Pharaoh, and she was taken into his palace. He treated Abram well for her sake, and Abram acquired sheep and cattle, male and female donkeys, male and female servants and camels. So now Abram... 
who didn't have nothing. And Abram is Abraham. His name was Abram before it was Abraham. Okay. So Abraham, who was Abram in this story, came into Egypt with nothing, went into Egypt, pimped out his wife to Pharaoh. And in return for that, uh, Pharaoh gave Abraham all kind of good things. That ain't, that's just like the pimp. You know what I'm saying? A woman going there in the room, handle the man there. And then you come in and, and collect the, you know, collect the funds. You feel what I'm saying? This is the same shit. So we talking about pimping and prostitution in, 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 in biblical time. And the thing is, the damning thing about this is Abraham is the man of the Lord. So how is he the man of the Lord and he pulling tricks on his own damn wife? Come on now. Okay, now listen. But the Lord inflicted serious disease on Pharaoh and his household because of Abram's wife, Sarah. So Pharaoh summoned Abram. What have you done to me? He said, why didn't you tell me she was your wife? Why did you say she is my sister so that I took her to be my wife? Now then, here's your wife. Take her and go. Then Pharaoh gave orders about Abram to his men, and they sent him on his way and his wife and everything he had. So see, even when they kicked his ass out, the Pharaoh still showed him love to say, well, motherfucker, get your ass up out of here. You can just keep everything I gave, but get the fuck on up out of here. Now, the question I got for this is, now God is the one who told Abraham to flee her and go into uh, Egypt and shit. So why is it that, you know, God is going to make uh, uh, the Pharaoh suffer, you know what I'm saying, whenever he took in Sarah, when it was Abraham who was the one who, who pimped her ass out in the first place. He didn't, you know... And they talking about the, the Egyptians would have killed him. He didn't say the Egyptians killed him when he found out. Okay, he just sent his ass on his way. So there you go right there. He did, Abraham did that for his own personal gain. Okay, not because he was, he did that for his own personal gain. Pimped out his wife, told him that that was his sister, all for the fact that he wanted some shit that was going on in Egypt. And this is what started, you know, uh, Abraham's, a uh, 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 campaign. This is what started this campaign. He had to go into Egypt first to get his 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 belongings, his 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 fortune. So now at this point, it's easier for him. You see what I'm saying? Well, you know, I ain't gonna say easy, but goddamn it, I know one thing. He came in with no cattle or nothing, so I know damn well. Now he got food. He got he got servants and donkeys and shit like that. He ain't got to walk. He can ride the donkeys now. You see what I'm saying? So he got he he you know he came up in Egypt. Came up in Egypt off of his wife back you see what i'm saying literally he had her laying down on his on her back for pharaoh so he can get some belongings that's some that's you know that's some low shit right there family and this is again the the, the man of god okay and i know a lot of religious people right now is upset bitch i don't give a fuck i'm gonna stomp your ass out repetitiously till you understand this foolishness that you got our people up under you see what i'm saying now this is the family tree of Terah. See, now Terah was Abraham's father. Okay, now if you look right here, if you look right here, it says Sarah branches off from Terah. So Abraham and Sarah is sister and brother, man. Okay, that's incest. That's incest, man. Am I lying, y'all? Here go the daddy, Terah. You see Abraham right here on that first branch from Terah. You see Sarah and Abraham. So what is God doing ordaining incestual relationships, man? You feel what I'm saying? Like, there's no excuse for no shit like that, family. Okay, beloved, we got to look into and that and see people are look at this already biased. You know what I'm saying? They looking at it as if this is an infallible word of God. God don't do no wrong. God wouldn't have done nothing like that. And see, when you got that mindset and you read something like this, you glance over it because that ain't what you want to see. You don't want to see this. You don't want to see the patriarch of the, uh, the Christian religion and Islam and Judaism too. You don't want to see the patriarch in an ancestral relationship with his sister. And then he out here pimping his sister to the Pharaoh. Oh, evil Pharaoh. That's what they call Now he evil, but even when he lied to the Pharaoh, gave him his wife and lied, he didn't, you know what I'm saying? He didn't kill him. He just said, get the fuck up out of my land, man, because y'all on some other shit over here. See what I'm saying? Now we're gonna go to Lot, which is the uh, I think he's the nephew uh, of Abraham. Okay, so the apple don't fall too far from the tree. Now I want y'all. Now the story here is I'm gonna give y'all a breakdown. Okay, Lot got two daughters. Okay, now some angels. In, he, he stayed in Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay, so 
the uh, angels came to Lot's house seeking some refuge. Now the men, let me come on man here. So the men who was in the city of Sodom, you know, they wanted to have sex with the angels. So Lot say, no, nah, don't, don't, don't have sex with the angels. I got two daughters. Y'all can have y'all way with them. Now, fam, what the, I mean, come on now. You get, you, you giving your daughters out, man. You know what I'm saying? You giving your daughters out to, to hold them out. See, but these is God's men though. This is what I'm, this is what I'm saying. And you know, this is prominent in the Bible because out of, well, I'm, I'm going to get with this story then because out of the Lot story, there's also another story where he had sex with his two daughters. Got to tell you that. We got to talk about it, okay? Now, I, I think this is Genesis uh, 19, okay? It's Genesis 19. Listen, it's like the two angels arrived at Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gateway of the city. When he saw them, he got up to meet them and bowed down with his face to the ground. My lords, he said. Now, I, don't, I, I, didn't, know the, I didn't know angels was lords. I didn't know the angels was Lord. I just thought it was one Lord. Now they got angels as Lords. Okay. My Lord, he said, please turn aside to your servant's house. You can wash your feet and spend the night and then go on your way early in the morning. Now these is angels. Nigga, I mean, what the fuck they need to wash up and shit for? Nigga, they can fly. They, they You know what I'm saying? Nigga, they, well, you know, according to the, the stories and the depictions, angels got wings. So what the fuck do they need to, you know, spend the night? They got to rest up. Nigga, these is divine beings nigga these ain't regular humans or not supposed to be see that's why you can't read this shit literally listen now no they answered we will spend the night in the square but he insisted so strongly that they did go with him and entered his house talking about life he prepared a meal for them baking bread without yeast and they ate before they had gone to bed all the men from every part of the city of Sodom, both young and old surrounded the house they called to lot where are the men who came to you tonight Bring them out to us so that we can have sex with them. Family, hold on. We talking about men wanting to have sex with other men. Now, I understand Sodom and Gomorrah, that was a, you know, an ancestral evil place in this and the third. See, but I'm just saying, now, these is angels, man. These is angels. And I don't know how everybody in the city would, you know, I mean, the, the story don't even make sense. They want to have sex with angels. Dressed as, or I guess they came in the guise of men. I don't know. Okay, who knows? Because like I said, this story is unbelievable. It's ridiculous. Okay, it's incredible. Okay, niggas say, yeah, that, hallelujah, incredible. No, bitch, if you look back at it, credible mean that it's uh, something that you can put your, your faith in. Uh, the source is reliable. Incredible mean it's not credible. Yeah, so the Bible is very incredible. You know what I'm saying? Now, let me read the rest of that. This is where you pay attention. That is now Lot went outside to meet them. Talking about the men who want to have sex with the angels. Lot went outside to meet them and shut the door behind him and said, no, my friends, don't do this wicked thing. Look, I have two daughters who have never slept with a man. Let me bring them out to you and you can do what you like with them. But don't do anything to these men for they have come under the protection of my roof. So you protect some some strange some strangers you know what i'm saying some men you don't know nothing about you protect them but you don't want to protect your daughters you don't want to protect your daughter and see that's why i got i'm uh, uh creating a lecture talking about uh how the bible perceives women because nigga i mean if you look through the bible it's if, if they ain't a prostitute or whore or harlot or something like that you know, the, the women don't really hold no weight. The only reason they in the book is to have more kids. That's the only reason why they in the book is just to bring about more mortal men. And see, that's just like that Greek mythology, because in the Greek mythology, there were no women at first. It was just men. And then the woman that did come, you know what I'm saying? That, that was Pandora. She only came to bring about destruction to the earth. See what I'm saying? So you can see the temperament uh, and the climate towards women and how is the Greek, Hebrew, whatever the fuck you all Jew and these people, they don't want no women. Okay, the Romans and and all of that because I got uh I got a lecture that's coming out for Lupercalia, which is dealing with Valentine's Day. You know, Saint Valentine was killed. That's the reason why it's called Valentine's Day. Saint Valentine was killed by the Emperor Claudius because he was in love with a woman. They they it was forbidden for them to have uh, relationships to, with a woman, woman with a woman 
in the uh, Roman times at this time under Claudius. And really, to this day, they don't want no woman. So I'm just showing you the correlation in between them, them Cro-Magnon men who wrote this Bible and the Cro-Magnon men who y'all give all this praise to in ancient history. Okay, I'm done with that. So I want y'all to, I'm going to read this one more time starting at six, okay? Now, really, I'm going to start at five. Okay, they called to Lot. Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us so that we can have sex with them. Okay, Lot went outside to meet them and shut the door behind him and said, no, my friends, don't do this wicked thing. Look, I have two daughters who have never slept with a man. Let me bring them out to you and you can do what you like with them. Okay, you want the, I mean, that's, that's, that's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. But don't do anything to these men for they have come under the protection of my roof. I'm not even going to deal with that no more. Now, we're going to deal with Leviticus 18, 6 and 7. What does it say? You must never have sexual relations with a close relative for I am the Lord. What does it say? You must never have sexual relations with a close relative for I am the Lord. Do not violate your father by having sexual relations with your mother. She is your mother. You must not have sexual relations with her. Now, who the fuck needs to be taught this? You see what I'm saying? Who needs to know that you know it's, it's not right to have sex with your mother? See, that you know, that's the cro Magnon man. Black people don't need nigga, I don't need no book telling me no shit like that. I under I, I don't I'm not sexually attracted to my damn mama. I mean, and I don't know who the fuck is, or, you know, and I ain't gonna say that because I know it's a lot of weird motherfuckers who, who into that kind of stuff. See what I'm saying? But I, in my circle, I don't deal with nothing like that. See what I'm saying? And when you're dealing with the melanated being, the black man, black woman, usually you don't have to tell us no shit like that, man. We know, we understand that. See, but the crow magnet man, and it's crazy how God's chosen people are the ones who he got to tell this to. But the people who or pagan and heathen, they don't need to know about uh, uh, her a God telling them don't have sex with your mama and this, that, and the third, or don't have sex with a close relative. But I brought this scripture up because the next point is going to lead me to that next story a lot where he having sex with his daughters. Now, it say you must not have sexual relations with a close relative, okay? Now, let's read this. This is Genesis uh, th uh, 30. Well, my bad. I don't know. I know this Genesis. I, I didn't put the scripture down. No, my bad family. Now, it say, Lot and his two daughters left Zohar and settled in the mountains, for he was afraid to stay in Zohar. He and his two daughters lived in the cave. Listen now. One day, the older daughter said to the younger, our father is old and there is no man around here to give us children, as is the custom all over the earth. Let's get our father to drink wine and then sleep with him and preserve our family line through our father. So here they go plotting and conspiring to get they, they daddy drunk so they can have sex with him. Because I guess they think that it ain't nobody else in the, in the world. Because at this point, God done, you know, burnt up Sodom and Gomorrah. He done turned Lot uh, wife into a damn pillar of salt because she looked back. You see what I'm saying? So, there you, so you got this crazy ass story here and it gets even crazy. Okay. That night, I'm reading 33 now. That night, they got their father to drink wine, and the older daughter went to sleep with him. He was not aware of it when she lay down or when she got up. Now, how the hell are you that drunk when you don't know your daughter is fiddling with you? You you know what I'm saying? And then, listen, the next day, the older daughter said to the younger daughter, last night I slept with my father. I mean, bitch, you could have just said daddy because that's both y'all fathers. I mean, anyway, last night I slept with my father. Let's get him to drink wine again tonight and you go in and sleep with him so we can preserve our family line through our father. So they got their father to drink wine that night also and the younger daughter went in and slept with him. Again, he was not aware of it when she lay down or when she got up. That's a See, and that's a damn lie. Nigga, he wanted to have sick. Now, I know this story didn't happen, but the sick motherfucker who wrote this, nigga, he wanted to have sex with her because ain't no way that my daughter's finna get me pregnant. I'm, I'm sorry, get me drunk. To the point where I, I don't even know that I'm having sex with my daughters, and then they do it again the next night. No, nah, nigga, you ain't you ain't confused, nigga. You was not you just nasty, okay? You nasty. That's what it is. Stop playing, man. Listen. So both the lost daughters became pregnant by their father. Incest. Okay, what's the title of this? Incest and prostitution in the Bible. Okay, so both of lost daughters became pregnant by their father. The older daughter had a son. 
and she named him Moab, okay, the Moabites. He is the father of the Moabites of today. The younger daughter also had a son, and she named him Ben Ami. He is the father of the Ammonites of today. Okay, so here you go, a man having sex with both his daughters, and then over here now, and that's what I'm saying. They creating tribes and shit, but in Leviticus, the, the law of the law say you must never have sexual relations with a close relative, for I am the Lord. Huh? Do not violate your father by having sexual relations with your mother. But on the flip side, you can say do not violate your mother by having sexual relations with your father. She, if he is your father. You must not have sexual relations with him. I just changed it up because it say she is your mother. You must not have sexual relations with her. But on the flip side, same thing goes here. That's your daddy. You can't be having sexual. So I'm trying to figure out how these tribes is coming up out of this, this incest. Okay. How these tribes is coming up out of this incest. And then they try to be funny because you got Amon, which is the Egyptian deity. See what I'm saying? And they done put it in here that he's the son out of an ancestral Cro-Magnon relationship. Huh? Stop playing, man. Now, I'm, I'm reading these scriptures here. So when I deal with this next part of this uh, lecture, we can understand the contradiction in between this God who laid down a law and his chosen people who just they can't get right. They just cannot get right. OK, so Leviticus 21 and 9. If a priest's daughter defiles herself by becoming a prostitute, she also defies her father's holiness and she must be burned to death. OK, that's clear. Leviticus 19, 29. Do not profane your daughter by making her a prostitute, lest the land fall into prostitution and the land become full of depravity. OK, it's pretty clear there. Deuteronomy 23, 17. None of the daughters of Israel shall be a cult prostitute, okay? And none of the sons of Israel shall be a cult prostitute. This is this right here is key because I want to make sure that we understand Deuteronomy 23, 17. None, N-O-N-E, not one, none of the daughters of Israel shall be a cult prostitute and none of the sons of Israel shall be a cult prostitute. Okay, so we got all that down. It's clear. All right, so I don't want no excuses when I go in and bust y'all ass with this right here. Now, right here in James 2, 25 through 26, in the same way was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deed, uh, deeds is dead. So, you know, that's where they get their faith without work is dead. Now, what y'all don't understand about Rahab is she was the prostitute in Jericho. So now what, what makes her a uh, uh, key is you had Joshua who needed, uh, who set up spies in Jericho so they knew how to take it over, whatever the case may be. And they found refuge in the prostitute house. Now the prostitute was lying to the, uh, you know, the leaders of Jericho or whatever the case may be saying that they didn't, she didn't have no, you know, she wouldn't hide nobody and they was hiding on the roof of her house or something like that. Okay. So now she found favor in the Lord. Now she a prostitute now. I, you know what I'm saying? Now she's a prostitute. So we got to make sure that, that this, yeah, we understand that Rahab is a prostitute and all of a sudden now she finds favor in the Lord. What kind, what is, listen, Joshua 6.25. But Rahab the prostitute in her father's household and all who belong to her, Joshua saved alive. And she has lived in Israel to this day because she hid the messengers whom Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. Now, that, now, I, now I, I got a problem with that because right here in Leviticus, I'm sorry, in, in uh, Deuteronomy, it say none of the daughters of Israel shall be a cult prostitute. Okay. So how is Rahab living in Israel to this day and she was a whole prostitute? Okay, did, did, I mean, did she go into the land and now she done changed? She been a prostitute all her life. Now all of a sudden she go to Israel and I guess y'all don't think she's supposed to be giving it up the same way. Y'all better come fuck, come the fuck on, man. So, I, so, and then, you know, right here, by faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. So you see what I'm saying? She was a, uh, 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 what, what do you call it? 
a pillar of faith. You see what I'm saying? She's a she's a pillar of faith. Now I don't. I guess the guy couldn't go find a, a wholesome woman to go help the people stay in the goddamn uh, Jericho, the, the spies of Jericho. I guess God couldn't give them a wholesome woman to help them out. He had to give a prostitute. Now, why would you give the, uh, somebody who you rebuke, who you burnt, you say need to be burnt to death, okay? How is it that you are uh, ordaining these sick people, okay, to give refuge to your chosen people? I'm not understanding that. Okay, you done talk bad about them all this time, and then you being the Lord, because she say the reason why she helped uh, Joshua and them out is because she heard, I guess she heard something from the Lord. So the Lord is talking to prostitutes to help people out, but yet you make the the, the condemnation to say, oh, well, uh, I condemn any prostitute that's in, that live in Israel or anywhere else. I condemn prostitutes. Now the prostitute is helping you out to take over cities and shit. See, see, so there you go right there. Another instance of prostitution in the Bible, in the Bible now. And not only that, your God is, 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 you know, leaning towards the prostitute to help his chosen people. That's, woo, man. Okay, now here we go again. Now, whoever don't know, uh, Reuben, and I'm going to give y'all this uh, genealogy and this breakdown before we get into the scripture so we can break this down. Reuben was the son of Jacob. You know, Jacob got his name changed to Israel. So Jacob was really the start of the, 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 the tribes of Israel. He was the progenitor of the tribes of Israel. OK, now <clears throat> Jacob had a son named Reuben. Now, one of the women who got pregnant by Jacob name was Bilhah. OK, this is Bilhah right here. Now, Bilhah was a maid to, uh, I think, Leah which is the white. Now, see, this is some crazy shit. And, and well, if you get my other lecture and you check that out, uh, uh, polygamy in the Bible, you see what I'm saying? You will see that Jacob had the two sisters, Rachel and Leah. He had sex with both of them, had kids from them, but at one point they was barren. So they gave Jacob up to the maid. You see what I'm saying? So uh, one of the maid's name was, uh, I think, Zilpah. Okay, one of the maids' name was Zilpah. The other maid name right here is Bilhah. So he took her up as a concubine. You see what I'm saying? He took her up as a concubine. So here you go. You got Rachel. He married Jacob. Married Rachel. Jacob is Israel. He married Rachel. Rachel got a sister named Leah, and he married Leah too. I, and I'm trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. How is it that polygamy is wrong? But yet you got the father of the 12 tribes of Israel who you niggas call yourself a, a tribe of Israel. And this motherfucker having polygamous relationships. That's supposed to be against the Bible. Adulterous relationships. Then on top of them two sisters, you got the maids. So he done made the two maids, Zilpah and Bilhah concubines. Now we finna get into this scripture. Genesis 35, 22 through, 22 through 30, 23, my bad. Genesis 35, 22 through 23. And it came to pass when Israel dwelt in that land, Israel is Jacob, that Reuben went and lay with Bilhah, his father's concubine. And Israel heard it. Now the sons of Jacob were 12. You see what I'm saying? So here, now, now let's go back. Let's go back to Leviticus. What does it say? You must never have sexual relations with a close relative for I am the Lord. Let me let me put the spotlight on this shit. Do not violate your father by having sexual relations with your mother. She is your mother. You must not have sexual relations with her. Now, we understand that Bilhah is not really Reuben's mother. Okay, I, we understand that. But what we also need to take into consideration is that was his father's wife. So he disrespected his father. So you got the 12 tribes here and they straight up disrespecting, get, telling, basically telling your father, man, fuck you and your rule, nigga. This is my woman now. See what I'm saying? And, and well, I'm not going to get into all that because that's crazy because, you know, whenever this supposed to have happened, Jacob was supposed to be damn near, he was blind and damn near on his deathbed. Now, you know, 20 years later when his son done banged up his wife, now he died, which is just a, a dag I want to throw in there because it took him 20 years or eight chapters later to fucking die. You know what I'm saying? When he was just on his deathbed 20 years, how the fuck does that happen? Nigga is, is about to croak out and he live another 20 goddamn years. Okay. A 20, another 20 years. 
I, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I, I, that's not the miss. So I'm not gonna deal with it. Now, we dealing with owning, okay? Dealing with owning. Now, I put this in another one of my lectures, but I'm gonna go ahead and break this down to y'all again. Now, so Judah, which is one of the tribes of Israel, he had three sons, okay? Okay, he had three sons. Now, one of his sons' name was Ur, which is funny because that's where Abraham came from was Ur, even though they spell it U R. Okay, E A E I O U being vowels are interchangeable, so U and E is interchangeable. So he had a wife, uh, Ur, which was Judah's son. Uh, uh, had a wife, right? And and his firstborn, and her name was Tamar. So Tamar was Ur wife. Okay. Okay, now, but Ur was killed by the by God because I guess he was wicked. So I'm gonna read this. Okay, it say Judah got a wife for Ur, which is his son, his firstborn, and her name was Tamar. But Ur, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the Lord's sight, so the Lord put him to death. So the Lord out there just killing people. You know what I'm saying? He he ain't killing none of these pedophiles, none right now. You know what I'm saying? Out of just out the stream, but he 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 he's. He's uh, uh, single-handedly killing people. He's not going to go get people to kill her. He came down to kill her, okay, and put him to death. Okay, now, so now Judah had another son named Onan. Now, what, what, what uh, the Lord wanted Onan to do was to have sex with his brother's wife, okay, his dead brother Ur, his wife, in order to bring about a child. But see, Odin said, man, even if I nut in this woman and have a child, that's not my child. You know what I'm saying? Well, it, it's my child. That's oh, my bad. I got that wrong. Because they want him to nut into the woman so that they have a child for uh, her. But he's saying, if, if I nut in this child, that's going to be my seed. That ain't, you know what I'm saying? That's not my brother's seed. You know what I'm saying? So what he did was he would, you know, he banged up, but he ejaculated on the ground. That made the Lord mad. Okay, so let's read this. Then Judah said to Odin, Sleep with your brother's wife and fulfill your duty to her as a brother-in-law to raise up offspring for your brother. But Odin knew that the child would not be his. So whenever he slept with his brother's wife, he spilled his semen on the ground to keep from providing offspring for his brother. What he did was wicked in the Lord's sight. So the Lord put him to death also. So now you got the Lord mad that, that this man, because in God's word, he said, don't be out here, you know, having adulterous relationships. So just because this man trying to, you know, live up to the word of the Lord, the Lord killed him. The Lord killed him, family. OK, what the fuck is we read, man? So let me back this up again for y'all. OK, so Judah has three sons, Ur, Onan, and I forgot the last one name. I, damn, I forgot. But anyway, the two main characters we need to be you know, worried about in this instance is Ur and Onan. Now, Ur was... Judah's firstborn, and he got a wife for him, Tamar. Okay, so now the law didn't like her, so he killed her. Okay, now Onan is the second son up, so the second son is supposed to nut or have a child uh, with Tamar, which is Ur, his brother's wife. Okay, uh, Onan is supposed to have a, a, a child with her, but Onan said, "Man, that's not right." You know what I'm saying? He got good sense. You know what I'm saying? Saying it's not right. Even though he did bang up, he still banged up. So, I mean, you know, but when he banged up, he nutted on the ground. He ejaculated on the ground. So now the Lord mad now. So now he kills Onan. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Now he killing people for not having sex and, and creating other. But yet you don't kill people for using your name in vain. You don't kill people who out here uh, committing bestiality, having sex with animals and shit like that. You're not killing people who you know, having sex with their daughters is because it's some crazy shit going on out there in this world. Motherfuckers is having sex with their daughters, pimping people out, pimping their kids out. And when you look back on this damn Bible and see, you understand why they not, they ain't phased by because they God ordained this shit. Okay? Now, we're going to deal with old Judah. Okay? So we just deal with Ur and Onan, the sons of Judah, but now we're going to deal with Judah himself. Now, <clears throat> tomorrow, we already know about tomorrow. Now, the thing about the story about this right here is uh, basically Judah, was he kept tricking Tamar out of marrying his younger son, the one that the third son I was telling y'all about. So she got upset and dressed herself up as a prostitute. OK, and then, uh, you know, pretty much had sex with Judah and took his belonging. OK, now listen to me now. Listen to this. 
It say when Judah saw her, he thought she was a prostitute. He thought she was a prostitute for she had covered her face, not realizing that she was his daughter-in-law. Listen now, he went over to her by the roadside and said, come now, let me sleep with you. Now this is Judah, the tribe of Judah, the, the tribe that Jesus come out of. See, this is Judah. This is Judah, y'all. And he's sleeping with prostitutes on the side of the road. And see, he didn't even know that that was his daughter-in-law. So there, you, and then matter of fact, he got her pregnant. Got her pregnant now. Got her pregnant. So here you go right here. And the funny thing is, see, he's a hypocrite as damn self because when the people came to him and said, well, your daughter-in-law looked like she done got pregnant, he, he said, well, we're going to have to burn her. We're going to have to kill her. Until she said, well, the joke's on you because when she slept with him, she uh he gave her, I think, his staff or something like that for her to keep, you know, as a keepsake or whatever the case may be, or as a trade-off. So now she said, Well, you should know who it was who I slept with. And when she gave him the uh the you know the the, the object, whether it was a staff or whatever, and he realized what had happened that he had slept with her. Now he was like, Oh, were well, you righteous among the Lord? This that nigga switched up his whole tune. First, you want to kill her for being you know, a whore and all this. Then all of a sudden, now that she, you done figured out what's really going on, now you want to say that she's righteous within the Lord and this, this. See, that's that's game right there. And that's what I'm saying. These are the chosen men of the Lord with prostitution and, and God, all kind of incest and everything else, family. Everything else. So now, you know, I'm finna end this, but I gotta know what God are we talking about that would you know, let me come on the park. I feel like it's jumping. What God is we talking about that will ordain some shit like this, man? You know what I'm saying? See, I know this is some, some power-packed information. A lot of people ain't heard about this. Listen, I told you I got more files on these niggas than the CIA. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't play no games with this information and this research, okay? And this is why I don't do no niggas. Well, why are you not religious? Bitch, because it don't make no sense in there, okay? I don't. I don't celebrate no goddamn religion. I don't practice no religion. They got practice black power, okay? That's what I practice, black power. My whole thing is black liberation. You understand what I'm saying? I'm only here to supersede my successes. All the other shit, the petty shit, I let y'all keep that. You know what I'm saying? I'm a champion of the people, and I carry myself in that way. You know what I'm talking about? So, family, this was a hard body lecture again. You know what I'm saying? If you feel like I touched you in ways that other people can't, no homo and no, you know, no pedophile, no incest shit. But if you feel like mentally I put you on another level, you know what I'm saying? Fuck with your boy, man. Support your brother, and let's get going. You know what I'm saying? Purchase with a purpose. If you do not have a black goddamn righteous cause to put that dollar towards, put that motherfucker up. You know what I'm saying? And, family, I love you. Got to say that. I love you. Know the enemy. And until next time, family, black power.